All right, I had to use Ransom's phone, but we're on asthma. I decided I'm gonna go and put them in alphabetical order. So we did Astelastis, which is not really like alphabetical order, but it's like all A's. So Astelastis, we did ARDS, and now we're doing asthma. Um, and I was going really in depth with it, and I'm like, it's already almost like, <clears throat> oh my God, it's already nine. So we have, and we only, this is like my third thing. <clears throat> Look at this. This is like all that I want to do. And I did only two and I'm on my third one. So yeah, talking about trial and error and oh, like I don't understand. Anyways, this is why. Um, So let's go and do some questions on asthma. Since you've already watched the all the asthma stuff that I put up there. So what I did was I went to the test bank and there were several the stuff of asthma. Um, there were only like two on ARDS and like the other one, there was like nothing at all, like maybe like one. So that's why I think it took a little bit longer. But anyway, asthma, let's go to eight. Um, so then I'll read the notes on her thing because I went to go take her test and it didn't make sense for us because she put a lot of like drugs on there. Um, so when the nurse is asked what causes asthma, how should the nurse respond? Asthma is thought to be caused by A, an autosomal recessive trait, B, autoimmunity, C, excessive use of antibiotics as a young child, or D, interactions between genetic and environmental factors. So what is the answer? This one's the easier one. Okay, so D, interactions between genetic and environmental factors. <clears throat> okay, so let's go down to 14. Um, okay, so a nurse recalls asthma is classified by A, pathophysiological differences, B, clinical severity, C, genetic traits, or D, treatment outcomes. This I didn't know. Um, okay, so it is <clears throat> B, clinical severity. So the National Asthma Education and Preventive Prevention Program offers stepwise guidance for the diagnosis and management of chronic asthma based on clinical severity. And that's all it says. Um, can I read from like a book? Why is it classified? Um... It doesn't really say anything. Uh, global, the national. Um, I'm trying to like skim it so I can understand how do they. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So let's go down to 23. Next question. All right. So a nurse is prepping or preparing to teach the staff about asthma. Which information should the nurse include? Um, airway hyper responsiveness in asthma is re related to what? Um, a, increased sympathetic nervous system response. Um, B, the release of stress hormones. C, exposure to allergens causing mast cell degranulization. Or D, heredity, hereditary decrease in IgE responsiveness. <clears throat> this is an easy one too. Okay. So it is C, exposure to an allergen causing mast cell degranulation. So hyper responsiveness is due to mast cell degranulization. Let's see if B 
the book it makes it so like irritatingly descriptive like ugh. I literally would have to go and put like asthma template because I am not reading all the specifics because we have so many other things to remember I'm not gonna tell you um yeah no asthma ati template like excuse me i am not going to freaking do all that shit um let's see all right okay So pathophysiologically related to client problem, hypersensitivity in airway, tissue that results in obstruction. Um, all right, any who's. Let's get back to what we were doing. <clears throat> Hyper responsiveness is what I wanted to go and talk about, but like, Anyway, so we were at 23, we'll go to 26 for the next question. Um, a nurse is prepping to teach the staff about asthma. Which information should the nurse include? Airway obstruction, contributing to increased airflow resistance and hypoventilation in asthma is caused by A, type two alveolar cell injury and decreased surfactant, B, alveolar fibrosis and pulmonary edema, C, mucus secretion or bronchial constriction and airway edema, or D, collapse of cartilaginous rings in the bronchi. That's a lot of words. Okay, so airway obstruction and Airway obstruction contributing to increased airflow resistance and hypoventilation in asthma is caused by what? So C, mucus secretion, bronchial constriction, and airway edema. So the mediators of asthma cause vasodilation, <clears throat> um, increased capillary permeability, and mucus edema. Um, so then um, bronchial smooth muscle contraction or the bronchial spasm and mucus secretions from mucal goblet cells with the narrowing of the airways and obstruction to airflow. Um, I think there was one more, it was 31, okay. Um, okay, so a 10 year old male is brought to the ER with prolonged bronchial spasm and severe hypoxia. The most likely diagnosis on the chart is A, exercise-induced asthma, um, B, chron chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, C, status asthmaticus, um, D, bronchial bronchi bronchiotasis. I don't know how to say it. Okay, so what is it? So the answer is C, status asthmatics. So when bronchial spasm is not reversed by usual measures, the individual is considered to have severe bronchial spasm or status asthmat asthmaticus. Um, so in the book, it says if bronchial spasm is not reversed by usual treatment measures, the individual is considered to have acute severe bronchial spasm or status asthmatics. So if status asthmatics continues, hypoxemia, Hypoxemia worsens, expiratory, expiratory flows and volume decrease further, and effective ventilation decreases. Um, well, then acidosis develops as the PaCO2 level begins to rise. So the, you know, the um, carbon dioxide rises. So asthma becomes life-threatening at this point if treatment does not reverse this process quickly. Um, then you'll have a silent chest with no audible air movement and a PaCO2 of um, 70 m 
millimeters of mercury are an ominous sign of impending death. So above 70. So when we do PaCO2, the numbers are 35, 45. And then obviously 45 would be the acidic. Um, so 70 is pretty high. <clears throat> yeah. All right. That concludes asthma.